Incredible contrast after just a little more than 24 hours. Crews are hustling to clean up the mess and reopen I-75 South. We took a drive through there today with no problems at all. So the traffic headache is over, but we have to remember, this collapse was a tragedy for one Kentucky family. It really was. Construction worker Brandon Carl of Augusta was killed in the collapse. Our Tom McKee is digging into how state officials are making changes to keep workers and drivers safe. He joins us live with what he learned today. Tom? Well, that collapse and fatality here at I-75 on Hopple Street are forcing federal safety inspectors to speak out tonight. Why? Well, they say in the state of Ohio, Every week, about every week for the past three years, there's been a workplace fatality, and they want it to stop. This new video from an Artemis camera shows Monday's collapse with a bridge over I-75 from a distance, but there's no doubt of the impact. Construction worker Brandon Carl was killed. This young man died in, in a, what we consider a preventable workplace incident. Um, and it's a type of incident that uh, all too frequently is happening. That's Bill Wilkerson, a Cincinnati area director for OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. He gave three speeches just last week on workplace safety. Talked about uh, fall protection, the need for, that it, that for, for protection when you're working up at elevations, uh, the need for protection against uh, situations where you could be caught in equipment or struck by equipment. Monday's collapse is being investigated by both OSHA and the Kokosin Construction Company. The federal probe may take several months to complete. We have a general theory about what happened, but it's only a theory at this point, and you need to have evidence to back up that theory before you can be satisfied that your, your thinking is correct. Meanwhile, the southbound lanes of I-75 were reopened to traffic late Tuesday night. Crews from Kokosin were able to clear the concrete and steel from the roadway much more quickly than expected. Once that was removed, we were able to do an analysis of the pavement, and essentially it was a two-foot by two-foot pothole that had to be filled. Kokosing had a financial incentive to get the road open as well. Its contract calls for liquidated damages of $3,000 per lane for every 15 minutes of an unscheduled closure. Now, of course, not on your side has reached out to Kokosing for comment on this entire situation, but so far we have not gotten any reply. Tom McKean, not on your side, live in Camp Washington.